Welcome to What If, a show that discusses the latest episode of Doctor Who, Series 10, 2017, and discusses what it would be like if it were a classic Who episode. Oh, it's difficult. I am Ben. I am Luke. And I'm Nick. So, what if Thin Ice was a classic Who episode? Um, well, first of all, the main plot of the story would be even more focused on the, uh, I would have said, on the slavery of the humans and not the fish. Uh, a point I want to divest immediately here. It's, it's hideously creepy how close this story is to a pure historical story anyway. In fact, it is one. The, the most you could say this is sci-fi is maybe this is an alien creature, but it isn't. It's just but a it weird is. thing in the sea. Mm, I mean, the doctor does say, who, who cares if it's an alien or not? Suggesting it's quite possibly terrestrial. I'm extremely happy this is the first pure historical story. Thing is about Doctor Who, when it would include black people, it would make a massive point of it. It would, if you look at Frontier in Space, or the Smugglers, mm. or the Savages, those black people are front and centre. Here, they are also very front and centre. Except you see a lot more people in the background who are uh, of mm. different minorities. It's just that they are brought to your attention when um, the Doctor has the line of history is a whitewash. And before the episode was aired, Moffat had sort of made the point of they try to make it as diverse as possible, the cast. Yeah. Hmm. Doctor Who never tried to be diverse. It was diverse when it needed to be, which mm. was rarely. Yes, Here, unless he, it was the actual focus of the story. Yeah. Mm. Here it's being diverse for the just to be diverse, pretty much. Yeah, a uh, very modern thing. Uh, another point to discuss is that I feel that the less talking between the Doctor and the Companion over deaths and their moral implications, unless it's the massacre uh, in the modern day, and instead it would be more focused on secondary characters, because the story would be longer, either a four-parter or a six-parter. Yeah, definitely where Bill is concerned about the death of the boy, or she questions the doctor about, have you ever killed anyone? And she sort of throws a tantrum about that. That would not be present in Classic Who. They would see the boy die, and then would sort of just brush over it, and we'd move on to in the next scene. There wouldn't be that sort of emotional investment into it. It would be less emotional. Which, again, could be a good thing. It allows for more story. It allows for more characters. So here, this has to be focused a lot more on just the main two characters with then only a couple of secondary characters. And, plus an if, any, if, and if, if anything, Classic Who uh, remarked on the quantity of death rather than the quality, the person who died. I'm thinking about the massacre and Stephen leaving in a fit of rage. I'm thinking the same thing about Tegan in Resurrection of the Daleks. Hmm... Yeah, and, yeah, and even then, the only time it becomes the quality, the person who dies, is when it's the companion, his, her, or itself. Chameleon, Katarina, Adric. Mm. There's not much fallout from the Katarina death, though. It shows how companion-centric this series has been, because in the pilot, we see Bill totally freaking out and having to wash her face, and Nardo having to make a toilet joke after she goes into the TARDIS. And... There's a lot of impact to this companion. She uh, third point to discuss, a slower pace would exist, as I've said in the previous one, which isn't necessarily a good thing in these uh, historical stories. Please see the smugglers and the highlanders, where nothing much happens and the story just drags. A lot of the historicals felt like two and a half episodes that were just slung with all of this really dull historical detail that I could never buy into personally. 45 minutes is perfect for a historical. I think it's really good that they managed to do it. They can do it in big finish because they're really, really good. But here, I think it's perfectly worked out. Mm. Yeah, there, there's a very big difference between a slow pace, i.e. The, the Silurians, where everything works together to build on top of each other Good. at a padded pace mm. like the smugglers where there's just long scenes of filler it's emergency television 
Mm. But an effect of this quickened pace is that um, the villain is not introduced as early as he would have been in Classic Who. In Classic Who, we'd have seen the villain from probably the first scene, even, perhaps even before the Doctor. And um, So we, we'd have the reprise of the previous cliffhanger, so where they've landed on the Thames, and then the next scene would be straight to the villain, probably, in fact. And he would have a lot of henchmen who would he would speak to in mm. that Doctor Companion, uh, someone to bounce off of sort of way. Yeah, so you, you would get to know the the villainous characters a lot more than you do here. Yeah, um, there, there are secondary characters for people to focus on, and if very absolutely necessary, give them big finish spin-offs. Where this episode, for me, diverges the most from Classic Who is there's a happy ending, uh, changes the will of the wealthy villain who dies, and writes in the street children, the the poor beggars, into the will. This would not have happened in a classical story. The Doctor wouldn't have felt the need to do this, and the show just wouldn't have bothered with it. The Doctor would just have left immediately after solving the problem. The closest thing I think we get to this is at the end of The Two Doctors, where the Doctor hideously smiles at Perry and says, I think it's a strictly vegetarian diet for us from now on. And it's all very twee. Same with the end of the Seas of Doom with the beach ball. It never felt right. And it always felt tacked on at the end. Here it's very much written into the story and it's building up to it. Mm. I guess it works better structurally, but I don't. It, classic who wouldn't have done that sort of thing mm. so well at the least yeah but because new who is more emotional it can do this whether or not it needed to do it i, I suppose it did uh, because of the message of this episode was in particular trying to show about being anti-racist etc etc it sort of makes sense that it would do it that's it Thank you very much for watching. Like, comment and subscribe. Watch the main podcast. Next week, what if Knock Knock was a Classic Who episode? I've been Ben. I've been Luke. And I've been Nick. Thank you. Goodbye.